What's up, everybody? Welcome to episode 11 of the Steel Strong Podcast. I am Isaiah Steele. I'm Isaac Steele. I'm Ira Steele. And we have our second timer, se- uh, special guest today, our very own mother, Kelly Steele. Yes, hello, everybody. She oh. is in the house. Well, glad you're here. Pastor Steele, a.k.a. Daddy Steele, a.k.a. our father. He's out in Atlanta right now doing some work. Um, so it's a perfect time to have you on. I'm excited for you to be back. I'm glad to be back. Get some of your uh, takes on certain things that we want to talk about on yes. today. Uh, first thing, first things first, I know uh, a lot of people have heard this. I'm not excited for it, but um, unfortunately, Odell Beckham Jr. has signed with the Baltimore Ravens. Now, the Baltimore Ravens is, uh, uh, as Steeler fans, we do not like them. They are not part of us. They are not uh, anything that... Um, I would say is worth watching or uh, worth living for. But anyways, um, Odell is there now for one year, $18 million. It's crazy. I don't know. That one year, $18 million is insane. Because, like, me personally, if I'm Lamar Jackson, I'm telling the Baltimore Ravens organization, y'all can get out of my life completely. Because think about it. Uh, What was his name? The um, linebacker. He was in the Bears, got traded to the Ravens. Oh, uh, 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 not Roquan. Yeah, Roquan Roquan Smith. Smith. Roquan Roquan Smith, he got the biggest linebacker deal from the Ravens Mm -hmm. in the offseason. The Ravens gave Odell Beckham Jr. a dude off of two ACL surgeries, an ankle injury. Yeah. Like, he hasn't played in a year and a half. And, and kind of old. And yeah. he's old. He's, you know, he, I know how this. He's 30, 31. But like, that's old for That's receiver. old in NFL terms. Mm-hmm. And they gave him an $18 million deal for one year. Like, I don't know. Me personally, if I'm Lamar, I'm good because they don't want to pay him. Yeah. So, I'm, I, but I don't know. That whole situation is yeah. so tricky. That whole situation is weird. I hope that Lamar Jackson sees after this, they true colors, though. Exactly. Because at the end of the day, man, if you, you was holding all this money from Lamar, but mm-hmm. right when a big face gets there, like Odell, oh, here's some money, here's some money. But it's because he has a traditional way. He has an agent. Uh-huh. Yeah, he has other people who are going to get money instead of Lamar, where it's just him and his mom. Right. They don't want that. So right. Yeah. That, that, he should see their true colors right there from him signing or them signing Odell Beckham. Sure. He should just see it. What's your take on it? You know, I just really... <laughs> And so concerned. I'm just kidding. I, you know, I, I, I was talking to uh, somebody a couple days ago about how Still Strong is such a great podcast. But when you guys talk about these sports, the women are kind of like. But you know who Odell Beckham is. I do. But but I'm saying just the women are like, is that important? And I know it's important to you all. Yeah. I do. It's I know it's important. a big deal. We talk about it. It's I life or to death. Y'all talk about it. I don't like the Ravens, obviously. I think Odell's trade and being a traitor against us personally sure. but he could have came to us too he could have he could have yeah, but you know i think that 18 million dollars for one year to do anything is a lot of money mm-hmm. and i just think that it just shows how much money um we give to this profession where other jobs that are much more important mm-hmm. don't get that kind of money i mean to play football for one year for 18 million dollars is what i'm kind of stuck on because yeah. it's it just shows what our, we as our country value. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There and, is a, and to piggyback off that, there is a little cons- not a conspiracy, but a theory going on around saying like um, football and basketball and stuff is like modern day gladiator period. You it know, is. all the people would go there yeah. to be distracted from the politics while all the other people are up in the emperor's temple talking about this or that mm-hmm. while they watch people slaughter each other. They just say it's like a modern day well, form of it. it. Is. it I so, mean, and, and honestly, you know. sports is a good distraction because mm-hmm. even right now, I miss football season. It was yeah, good to. Do. You know, it was good on Thursday night to know what game's on. It was good to know after Sunday church we'd come and watch a game. Yeah. It's a good Monday night. Those are good distractions yeah. to kind of get away from everyday life. But, I mean, Odell Beckham, I've been following him forever, you mm-hmm. know, since he was a boy, I guess. And, you know, I just – I wish he went to the Steelers, but that's my take on it. I think yeah. just $18 million is a – a lot of money to give one person. It's for a lot. It's year. a lot. But yeah. football is so important in America. I was watching uh, this uh, debate show the other day, and they're trying to get a, uh, a, a, a not a law, but like uh, they're trying to turn the Super Bowl weekend into a national holiday. Yeah. Where, and I agree with it. I, I, too. I think yeah. that you should have Sunday football is the game. And Monday, I think everybody should be off. Most definitely. Yeah. Right. Like, everybody's just off on Monday. Yeah. And I agree with that, yeah. you know, because it is a good time, and it's yeah. it's yeah. it's a good it's it's a good distraction. It is. It's well, yeah, it's, it's, American, like, it's American tradition. It's like it almost is. like uh, Thanksgiving or something I mean, like when I For real. For real. Yeah. When I met your dad, the, um, he, he told me the day we met, he wanted six boys. He wanted six sons. Mm-hmm. And all of them were going to play football. Yeah. All of them. Mm-hmm. So with that... That's just meeting your dad. His our, our family was just based on 
football is just part of our DNA. Even yeah. before we were Christian and it saved in church, it was football. Right. So that our family was just built like that. Well, so I, I mean, get it. Yeah. I mean, like our faith family football has always been our motto. And I feel like that's a lot of models for a lot of families in, in America. Just yeah. from the standpoint of it's such a it's such a great game and it's it's so American. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, it's just pure entertainment too. It's yeah. like it's like reality TV. You know, you yep. got the build up throughout the week. You got guys on Twitter talking trash to each other. Mm -hmm. You know, you got um, you got the sports analysts exactly. talking about sports it. Sports analysts up to talking. The game. I'm I saying know. like, yeah. there's more to it. There's a lot of stuff on the line. You know, every you know every Sunday counts or Monday yep. or Thursday. So yep. like, yeah, it's literally like it's 24 seven nowadays, it especially is. with like shows like first take and undisputed, you know, it's yeah. all going all the on. off season, drama. all the off season yeah. drama dudes like, like Lamar Odell, Jackson, Odell yeah. Lamar Jackson, all that. So it's yep. just, it's just, it's nonstop. And it's great. It's, it's literally, it's like watching a movie. It is. It <laughs> is. It's like watching movies. It really is. It is. Yeah. I love it. And then you have all the stuff in between. I mean, even now, I think how much is it for a Super Bowl commercial? It's like something oh, crazy. I think thirty like, seconds was two million. It was this like year it was three. It was three million for thirty seconds that is, this year. That is crazy. Yeah. It's a million every ten seconds. It's America's pastime, <laughs> and it's well, also the world's past. People are watching it. It's, it's a global game now. Yeah. You know, people are watching it everywhere. You right. Know, you know, that's just eventually. I know there's going to be an NFL team outside of, um, of course, mainland USA. They're going to mm -hmm. put somebody out. Yeah. Hi, I don't know, Canada, London, something. It's something. even growing overseas. I got my friends in Mexico. I got yeah. my friends yeah. in uh, yeah. Turkey hitting me up. Yeah. Oh, geez, it's growing. It's it is. Growing. Man, I yeah. mean, it's a great game. It's beautiful, but it, that's anyway. That's my two cents. If anybody's <laughs> listening, Sorry. it should be a national holiday. For yes. Super Bowl. Super Bowl. I feel like on that Monday, everyone. It's the Sabbath uh -huh. on the, on the, on that Monday, <laughs> and we get to <laughs> mourn the true. fact that football's over. You know, no that more college, true. high school. That yeah. is true. Football season. It was. I mean, even right now, like baseball's going, and of course, NBA playoffs is going, which we're going to talk about that too. Yes. But um, the NBA playoffs start, but once that's over. There's like that weird, what is it's it, like three month three window? Months. It's like a mild uh, depression. It's like, I, will, yes. I mean, baseball's still going on. That's cool. I appreciate them. But like, I don't pay attention to baseball to October. Yes, yeah, right. slow. You know, it's baseball and NASCAR. I mean, 100. Oh, NASCAR. How many games they play? 100 and 100 and 100, 162. 162 games. Yep. Yep. I mean, I know there's some people right now on the couch can't wait for the Padres to play at noon today. Yeah. But that's you. But for me, I'm like, man, hit me up yeah. in October. Yeah. You know, we can watch baseball. But anyway, basketball playoffs are coming. Um, yes. uh, we had our play in games. I know you probably not necessarily um, familiar and familiar to that. Okay, quick breakdown, mom. So, look, now, last two seasons now, I think two or three two, seasons, yeah, yeah, the NBA put in a play in system. So, it's seeding now. Back in the day, it was just basically the top eight teams made the playoffs. Right. Now, 10 teams are invited, invited to it, and they all play for seeding. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's just like a it's just it's more money. Yeah, it's <laughs> more money for the NBA. NBA. That's all the blood <laughs> down to. More games. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. Got it. But anyway, just off of your expertise oh. this year, because I know you are an NBA analyst back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> I did try out for basketball in seventh grade. Did you make it? No. Okay. At least you tried. Yeah. yeah. Good. It's tried. all about the effort. Yep. It's yep. all about the effort. Mm -hmm. Did you make like, did, uh, how many cuts did y'all have? Do you remember? Um, Was it like one cut? Like, I, I, I made first cuts. I didn't make final cuts. Okay. At least you made the first cut. Yeah. That's and good. Back in the day, they made you go look at the, the, the PE coach locker door mm -hmm. and the name was on there so all the kids yep. were so everybody knew who didn't make hey, that's it how was for us. That's how and, was for us. Uh, now I don't know if they <laughs> yeah. even do that now they probably send a secret text did y'all ever check the list I never yeah. checked the list I, had to check nah, the list. I, checked. I just go to practice I mean, like I'm here check the list nah I ain't gonna lie oh. I, I checked I checked the list of freshman year but after that yeah, no, my, I, I, wow. I would say that my freshman year I checked the list now here's a crazy story my freshman year uh, high school I checked the list and I go over to the freshman list and I'm not on there and for two seconds, I was like, bruh, I just got cut. Like, I couldn't believe, I was like, wow, this is crazy. I took out my phone, I had a Cricket flip phone, Razor. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, bro, I gotta call dad and tell him I didn't make the team. And I'm like, I can't believe this. And uh, my boy Terrell, who still yeah. to this day, grabs me. He's like, hey bro, we on JV. Uh <laughs> And I was like, oh, I, I, was like, wow. <laughs> I was like, I thought we got cut. That's funny. Wow. But I checked that freshman. I'm a, I was a freshman. I checked the freshman. Like, yeah. no, I was on JV. Wow. I tried out for softball. I didn't make it. I tried out for cheer. I didn't make it. I tried out for um, basketball again the next year. Didn't make it. Yeah. But you know That's what? Crazy. It never it never knocked me down. That's good. That's great. That's why you I, I joined track because they didn't cut anybody from track. Yeah. That's hey, hey, that's real. You were part of a team. Dude. I was. Exactly. Part of team. I lost matters. every game, but my time always improved. That's All good. That matters. Wait, you lost every like, like every race. race. Mm -hmm. yeah. But what did you? What did you, did you, did you, did you, you hundred. And, and you run and the hundred. Even the four hundred. What place? Dang. Dang. Coming. Alas. Okay. 
But I, but I would, but my time would improve. So it was, I was looking at my own time. Wait a minute. So they had you running a hundred and a four hundred. Yes. Wow. Jeez. Yeah, it was sad. My dad went to one track meet and I looked up at him. He just shook his head. But you know what? I, I <laughs> it was great social time because you know track meets were so long. So I had fun talking to people. Listen, and, I never ran track, but I would be at the meets hanging out with everyone. Yeah, it's, me and it's, I, me and I, just, you know, me, high school. Me and I was getting kicked hey, off the field. I, I, yeah. Hey, I, uh, me and I, whenever there was like meets at Centennial High School, we used to um, hop the fence and like we put on a backpack. I'm like, I'm like, we got my running track. <laughs> I remember uh, Coach Cherry? He was a track coach. He always, hey, get off the field because he's seeing we go over there trying to talk, trying to talk to girls from like yeah. Chandler, you know, yeah. Saguaro, all them schools. I remember. A quick story. I remember one time I went to a track meet and it was at Valley where I went to high school and there's like eight, you know, there'd be like eight schools there. So me and my boys, we talking to all the girls going everywhere. And you called me this particular day because mm-hmm. it was after I didn't have baseball, basketball, football, it was track. So everything missing. was up. I was missing, yep. but I was at school and you called me and I was like, hello. And you're like, where are you? I'm like, I'm at, I'm at the school. I'm chilling. Da, da, da. And you said, I remember your words verbatim. <laughs> you sound high. <laughs> You That's need crazy. to come home right now. <laughs> you sound high. I said, huh? She said, you sound high. I can hear it in your voice. <laughs> you need to come home right now. And so I'm like, uh, all right. So I get in my car, go home. She looking at my eyes. Yeah. She's smelling my clothes. I'm like, mom, I've yeah. never touched marijuana. Like, I was, I was 16 years old, yeah. 17 years old. I was always... On the loose. Back then, marijuana was like super taboo. Like you couldn't. Like, I'm still wondering was... who had that marijuana pack in our kitchen that I found on the floor. Man, we'll never Many know. years ago, man, it's no know. one will fess up to it. Oh nah, man, and to uh, this day, it's I a don't mystery. Know. Man, I really do. I really do. Do you remember I, calling me to the house? Talk yes, about. I yeah. need you to come look at this. Yeah, I hold up this package. <laughs> it was like a dime bag or something. I, I drove from my apartment over to the. Well, I had a house back then. Ooh. I drove from my house to yours. And, uh, is this yours? And I was like, wait a minute, I don't even live here. And then I'm looking at it, and I, you're like, smell it. And I smelt it. I said, oh, man, that's oregano. Yeah, <laughs> you told me it was oregano. It's a parsley. It's a parsley. I said, it's oregano. And my dad like, that's not like, oregano. No, it's, no. Oh, man. And then dad was, you know, dad is over there laughing like, man, I don't know. I man. go, is it yours? He goes, girl, of course not. But if it was, I'd tell you. <laughs> yeah. I'll never yeah, forget he grabbed it and just, just shook it down the toilet. Hold- yeah, no yeah. one own up to it to this day. It's a mystery. I know. Mean, I, um, I don't know, man. I don't know. Let's just say loyal uh, family some, here. We were talking really That's quick. I know. I know we were gonna go into memories, but let's just go into no, it. Really go quick. Go, no, go ahead. No, go to the NBA. No, but I want to tell this story really quick because me okay. and the boys were talking about it the other day. Um, when I moved out, I got married. When you guys would go out of town for preaching stuff, yes. Uh, the boys would have friends over when they were in high school. Yes, but not like parties. It not would either. be like it'd be nah. like seven, eight people. Yeah. And so I remember one time Mariah was still living at the house at that point, our sister, <laughs> and she calls me, Isaiah, the boys are throwing a rager at the house. Mom and dad are in, I don't know, y'all are like in Texas or something. They're in, they're in Dallas. You need to come over here and shut this down right now. So I'm like, man, let me go over here and shut it down. So I called y'all, y'all weren't answering. So I pull up to the house. I pull up to the house, there's like eight people in the kitchen. And they're playing like this water pong game. And okay. And we could have not, not even real beer. Hey, we yeah. water it was water. Hey, Got it. hey, and I'm sorry, I you know, we could have really threw ragers at that house. For sure. Yeah, if we dude. really wanted to, we could have really dude. did some crazy Man. project X. We was in every parties. city. Yeah, we were everywhere. We were, we were all, everywhere. all over the Maricopa County. Yeah, yeah around, bro. I pulled up, I pulled all up all to the house with my boy Corey to go shut this party down. Man, within 20 minutes, me and him was playing with the kids. We, yeah. we, we started playing the water she ball. Would, oh, yeah. She, he always... Mariah came downstairs. I'm going to call the police on you guys. He's trying to call the police on <laughs> I'm like, She no. came downstairs talking about, I, I called you to come over to stop this. And, and you're you playing. joined it. I know. <laughs> and shout, I, hey, shout out to Stella. Because I remember Stella would come through <laughs> at next morning, bring us McDonald's, yeah. get us all McGriddle yeah. and stuff like that, take care of <laughs> us. Make sure we have the blue power raid. Yeah. Make sure we... Uh, <laughs> you yeah, know, and funny. I love that because you guys, we were in church... Dad and I, of course, were pastoring. Sure. You guys were in high school. Yeah. And yeah. a lot of times I think they put that weird pressure on pastors' kids that they have mm-hmm. to be perfect or they don't make mistakes or they don't do things like that. That's why I'm thankful that we openly talk and laugh about the yeah. truth of yes. being there pastors no with yeah, kids. There was no pressure. There was no pressure. Of course, and we'd be out. Yes. You would hear yeah. like the stigmas or Don't the Don't you got church in the morning? You know what I'm talking yeah. about? Yeah. You, you would hear me on Saturday. Yeah. Yeah. Church I'm going to see you at church tomorrow. Right. You I'm would like, hear stuff like that, but like... 
it, it never really yeah. phased us. Never, right. I, I know that now. Or like you'll hear people, man, you know, pastor kids are the worst yeah. kids. Yeah. And I'd be like, oh, okay. Okay, like, all right. All right. No, like, that's not true. That's supposed to keep me up at night? Yeah. <laughs> right. Okay, go back to the NBA. Well. Oh, NBA. Okay, yes. yeah, yeah. Really quick. Who do you think is going to win the finals? We'll just go right to the finals. Who's winning the finals, Mom? I'm hoping it's the Phoenix Suns just because I feel like we need a win for the state. We do. Um, it's been a long time. We've been a, a team for a while. Mm -hmm. um, the last time we had a, a possibility is when Charles Barkley. Well, no, they went. 21. We went. We went. But it was the pandemic, too. It was but, weird. But it was weird time. Remember, we lost oh. to the, the guy, onto Takupo, the guy, remember you were trying to say his name? Yeah, yeah. I don't remember. But okay. that, was, that was COVID. That it was still weird. Life. COVID was weird. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, I think it would be great for them to actually win. And yeah. um, I like Devin Booker. He looks like a very nice guy. And I like the team jerseys. I like the new yeah, nice. revamped. Yeah. And I, mm -hmm. I think that um, KD looks so old, but... I'm yeah. glad he's, he looks like he's 48 yeah. years old. Yeah. But, I mean, I'm glad he's on the team. So, I think it'll yeah. be good for the – but I don't like basketball. I think it's a waste of time. I think – I don't watch basketball to the last two minutes because it's you, back, you and it. back and forth and back and You'd be at our games, though. You'd like, you be like being at our basketball games. But yeah. you never, like, watch basketball. No, right. I'm right. not a fan. Kind of like baseball with us. Like, we all played baseball. It was yeah. fun, but, like, we don't watch. But we don't watch so baseball, though. Yeah. I would know yeah. something's off if I like walk in the living room one day and mom's just watching the watching, basketball. Yeah, watching the hoop game. I'm like, oh, no. oh what's wrong with mom? Mm -hmm. I watched the last two minutes, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Of yeah. the of the finals. <laughs> no, I watched the buzzer beater with the um the final yeah. four. The NCAA tournament. Oh, yeah. That yeah. was that was yeah. exciting. Yeah. That was, yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. That was but time. that was what, three seconds of the whole game? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it was exciting. Yeah, right. I got excited. But really yes, that's good. what I think. So you're picking the Suns. I'm hoping the Suns. Okay. I, I don't know any other team. No, I understand. I yeah, like I like how the jerseys look for um Jay-Z owns the team. Oh, the Nets. Yeah, he was the an owner, yeah. He was. Yeah, yeah, he was. He like yeah. he, sell, he sold his share. He of sold it. his share and like started oh. his own yeah. thing. Well, yeah. I, I like but I like his font. Yeah, I like yeah. it too. The Nets. Nets. I like how it's simple. It's real. Yeah, nice. I base I like it off uniforms. Yeah. I like how it's just black nice and white. Clean. Nets are in the they're in the playoffs. Yeah, they're in the playoffs. Yeah, actually. They made it. Well, they made it. They're like a fifth seed in the well, East without Kyrie and all them dudes held it down. They held it down. Spencer Dinwiddie, all them dudes. I like Spencer Dinwiddie a lot. Of course, Cam Johnson and Mikael Bridges from the Suns. They did their thing. Mikael Bridges, he was averaging like twenty seven points. He was good with the Suns. He was his before they let him go. Of yeah. course, you know, him leaving Booker and all them, like he could really do his own thing. So yeah. I like the Nets. Not, I don't think they go far, but they're in the playoffs. They're in the yeah, playoffs. That's in. huge. They're that's, in. that's a good time. Oh, all right, who's winning the finals, man? Man. I know we I know we're like six weeks out, but of course I of course I want to say Lakers, but I'm you know, I'm realistic. Lakers yeah. aren't gonna win the championship, but you know, yeah. hopefully they get to the West Finals or something like that. But um honestly, right now, if I think that there's an NBA champion, and I've been saying this all year, I've been telling Isaac all year. And I've been telling Marcus too. Giannis Antetokounmpo is on a mission. <laughs> no one's stopping him. I'm telling that. you, no one's stopping You've the Bucks. I did the Bucks roll through. I yeah. think they win championship pretty handily, honestly. You think yeah. so? I think once they start rolling, because no one, he's on a mission, man. He's on a last mission. year. Last year did it in pretty. And it yeah, did because they about it. Did wild. They went to seven with the Celtics last year without Chris Middleton. Yeah, yeah. they without went Chris, without. Man. And y'all know Chris Middleton. He's a three and D guy. Plays oh, mid range. He's nice. Twenty two. He's gonna play great defense. Sure. So him being out and they still took Tatum and Jalen Brown. Celtics had a full strength all the way to seven games. Yeah. yeah. So I think this year, um, and the way the brackets are set up, um, of course the Bucks would play the Celtics in the East Finals, mm -hmm. and I think they're gonna go head to head. And of course I. Bucks are gonna go out, and um, of course, if we're gonna talk about a champion, the person I think coming up the West is probably the Golden State Warriors. Yeah, yeah man, you can't count you can't the bet against them. And I'm gonna just give y'all my answer now, bro. Yeah. So a couple of weeks ago, Ira told me just watch the Warriors play, just watch them play. And I'm like, all right, let me sit down and just watch them play. Mm -hmm. So I moved into my apartment here recently, and I just put the put the game on and watch. The Golden State Warriors play the best basketball. <laughs> they do. Yeah. It's so pure. It's, it's just it's so, so pure. Their chemistry is insane. The yeah. way they move the ball, yeah. move without the ball. It's insane. It's almost it. like a college I got the offense. Yeah. Yeah, you know? yeah technically. Like, so you say Warriors, you yeah. say Bucks, mom says Suns. I'm going with the Suns, man. Suns. I think the Durantula is about to come back to life <laughs> yeah. and get this thing going. Devin Book has already been going. I feel like uh they're finally starting to hit a little bit of chemistry here. So I mean, that first round with the Clippers, though. Oh, that's, that's going to be. That's well, gonna Paul be George is out. If Paul George was playing, it'd be different. Yeah. But it's Kawhi Leonard. We saw Kawhi 2019 Man, on the we Raptors. Just watch Kawhi we were just, watch, a couple days we were just watching Kawhi play. He's a robot. He's, he's next he's, level. He's it's a just robot. so easy. He is next level. Bro. I know you don't know who, who he is, but he's he's, he's, he's that good. guy. He's good. He's like a robot. They call him the claw. His yeah, hand, they call him. His hand is. Yeah. His hands are huge. His hands are huge. Big old He has no weakness. No. Like, he can do everything good. Hit a three mid range. Yeah. Defense. Defense. He'll dunk on you, too. 
dunk, dunk on him. He's not seven <laughs> foot. He dunked on Giannis. Yeah. I remember yeah. that. After everybody saw that. So, yeah, that sucks for y'all, though. Y'all got to pull him. I know the Lakers yeah, are playing man. the Grizzlies in the first round. That's, that's going to be, gonna be real interesting. That boy, Ja. It's going to be like vets versus new school. It's going to be literally yeah. old school versus new school. Yeah. But, you know, we're going to see what the true school is. Lakers in six. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he said the true school. Right. Lakers going to win at five or six. 100%. Oh, man. Yeah. I hear you. Speaking of true school, man, one of the things we want to talk about today is just our childhood and how we grew up amongst each other and uh really our culture in the steel family as you as most of you do know um we're pastors kids um this is pastor kelly that also co-pastors with our, our father reginald so um growing up in church um you guys started the church 2005 yes so i was i was about to be 13 years old and these guys were I was five. Kids. I, just five turned, I just turned seven that December. Yeah, yeah. So I mean I was seven for like a month. So basically, essentially, a good portion of our life has just been um PKs. But even before that, we were in church. Right. You know, like uh for instance, uh, uh just to show y'all how much in church we were, uh she had Ira on March eighth, two thousand I'm not sorry, sorry, nineteen ninety nine. I always say two thousand. Yeah, he always says he like say he a nineties kid, but he barely <laughs> made the cut. He barely made the cut. <laughs> I was at, you see, I said 2000, <laughs> but I'll give you credit, 1999 yep. in March, nine months left in the uh, year, but uh, uh, he's born March 8th, 1999, and um, we had church, I believe, like that next day, or two days later, two days I believe. Two days later, had him on a Friday. Yeah, and, and you didn't go to church because you were still recovering. Right. And uh, our bishop at the time. Well, uh, no, I went, to, I went to morning service. You did, but you didn't go to night. I didn't go to That's night crazy. service. That's right. So two days after having a baby, she's in church with the baby. Leading worship. Leading worship. Still, still, you know, mm. stuff still. Flowing. There you go. <laughs> stuff still good. The placenta was still wet. That's, that's crazy. <laughs> that's yeah. crazy. The cervix is still open. Jeez. And so is the Holy Spirit, apparently. <laughs> yeah, mom up there leading worship, bleeding. Leading and, uh, while bleeding. Leading while bleeding. <laughs> This, this literally the true leader. trait of a true leader can you lead while bleed <laughs> yes um but anyways that just goes to show you like how much in church and how involved we were and so growing up in church i feel like for me and i'll just speak my part um it was just the norm like you knew saturday night don't do nothing crazy or don't go out or don't you know you better get a good night's rest because you know sunday is for the lord you're gonna be at church and it don't matter who's playing that day. It don't matter what time the game started. It don't matter if you had plans. It don't matter if you had a birthday party uh, scheduled for somebody else. The Sunday was for church. And I mean, it still is to this day. And so back then as a young kid, sometimes it kind of, sometimes it get a little, you get a little burnt out as a kid where you're like, dang, I've been here all day. You know, da, 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 da. But I appreciate it now as an adult. Because now like going to church is, I feel like if I didn't go to church, it, my life just wouldn't feel normal. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Like even when I take breaks, like I took a break this week and it was just felt weird. Sure. Like I was like, dang, like not only am I missing my family, but I miss the church family. Yeah. I miss being at the church. Like I miss, you know, miss Alberta or Fendi or Ro. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm like, dang, this feels weird, kind of like yeah. I couldn't imagine life without church. And sure. same when I went to Virginia, I had to find a church home. Yeah. Um, and shouts out to um, uh, uh, Pastor Todd. I was at the Ramp Elevate Church. Yeah. Oh, he was really nice. cool. It yeah. was a cool church. I just had to be in there. So uh, growing up as a pastor's kid, you know, I really didn't feel that pressure. But I did feel that magnifying glass, if you will, because mm -hmm. like if me and Ira did certain things in school, it was magnified 10 times worse than if anybody else did it. I'll tell you a quick story. I was in high school and um, we had a closed campus. So uh, all the seniors could leave, though. It was my senior year. I'm like, cool, I'm gonna go get some lunch, whatever. So my boy, uh, my boy uh, Q and my boy, my boy D, they hop in the car and they're like, come on, Steel, let's go get some tacos. It's Taco Tuesday. I'm like, bet. So I get in the car, we get tacos, we come back. I sit down in class after I eat my tacos, like, cool, last class, I'm about to go practice. Man, I get a call to the office. I'm like, what's going on? I see a pink slip and I see two yellow slips. I get the pink slip, which is suspension, and my friends get the yellow slips, which is a referral. I'm like, oh, so I did the same thing as them. I didn't even drive, y'all. That's crazy. It wasn't even my car, but I, I'm the one who gets suspended. So I guess, like, dealing with stuff like that, it wasn't, like, pressure, but it was magnified, Yeah, if yeah. you will. It yeah. was. That's how it was. And, of course, yeah. you know, me and Isaac, we don't know nothing 
different. You know, our older sure. three siblings, they, you know, they were a little older when the church started. I was five when the church started. So mm -hmm. from the time Kingdom started to now, that's all we really know is Kingdom. So like you said, it was a great time. Well, Isaac, though, growing up was bro. fire, especially children's class, all that, all our friends. Miss Kim would let us take a nap yep. if we were burnt out. Yeah, She'd be like, y'all go take a nap this yeah. service. We go, or we <laughs> had like five services. Yeah, <laughs> we had five services all day. <laughs> or did. Mr. Bingo take us, we go play basketball. We go to the lake, yeah. go to church. Of course, we'd be D, we'd be a team man. Yeah. Yeah. Shorty, Breon. Yeah, Breon. <laughs> we built all them dudes back in the day. So uh, we yeah. used to be a quarry. Yep. So we used to have, we had a whole bunch of fun growing up. Barry like was said, cool. Yeah, V. Yep. Of course, there was the uh, magnifying glass that was on us. You know, everybody watching us, talking, yeah. oh, y'all the pastor's kids. Y'all doing this. Y'all being bad, you know, all mm -hmm. that. But other than that, it wasn't nothing crazy. No, I will say this, Ira. You were bad, bro. <laughs> yeah, I was. You were up. a bad kid. Yeah. At one point, Ira got kicked out of <laughs> This is this is our church. <laughs> this is our church. Our, our parents started this church. Ira got kicked out for a month. Yep. Yeah. Was not allowed to go to children's ministry for a for whole a month. month. I used to be in the front row with them. Who got suspended? A couple of times. I can't lie. I used to be. I used to sit with y'all in the front row. Yeah, you like, got kicked out of children's ministry. Yeah. Or like between services. <laughs> what Remember, were you doing? Just being bad. Just, he would just make not me, He would make me and T Man laugh so <laughs> yeah. hard. Oh, just distracting just, the whole be, time. It, I would I would yeah. say more disruption. If you okay. Will. It and was even it was to a point where like. I wouldn't even do nothing. They're like, hey, like, yeah. and, and people were, if someone was laughing in the back, and I'm just sitting there, they're like, all right, what are you doing? Because I was just always, uh -huh. I don't know. I was no, just, bro, don't make, don't, don't no, stop. no, 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 no. I promise you, most, of, most of the time it was me. Like, no, 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 most of the time like it was me. Like, they just had it out for him. No, nah, most of the time it was me. You was bad. Most of, most of the time it was Ira. They'd be like, stop. And Ira would still be whispering jokes. Yeah. Like, telling yeah. us it, like, it was, nothing's so, changed. Nah, but y'all be, be weak. Y'all was egging me but on. But it was so bad. They come and get me out of use. Hey, you got to talk to Ira. I'm like, man, what? I come out of use. And they Ira in the corner. I'm like, what'd you do? I didn't do nothing. I'm like, bro. Everybody else is playing. They got you in the corner. Yeah. So they kick you out for a month. But the funniest story that you told me was they kick Ira out for a month, right? He had to sit in the big church for a whole month. He yep. couldn't go. I hate that. He tortured so, us. I used to be in there. So week five came and he was finally, he was off probation and was able to yeah. go back or suspension <laughs> and was able to go back into children's ministry. And um, the first day back, I remember you telling me there was a there was a kid that went up to go pray, and uh, he was praying in front of the class, and your boy T Man was with you, and I guess the little boy like started praying, like I I I pray that like my my dad will stop, uh, he he won't hit me or throw me in a trash can or something yeah, like that, yeah. I, nah, something he, very he, dramatic. Nah, he said like he got beat by some skates by somebody. He like, said like somebody beat him with a pair like, of roller I, skates. I got, yeah, I got yeah. parent beat him with a pair of roller skates, and that's so, terrible. That's, that's not that's terrible. But, but come on, I'm, I'm nine years old. At nine years I'm old, nine, ten years old. So when we hear that in class, I just did my month of being in, in, the, in, the, in the box. So I just did my month. This is my first Sunday back, first morning back, and he said something off the wall like that. Of course, I'm hearing Isaac and T man cracking up laughing. Isaac and T man, this is, this is the part of the whole story where I said Ira was determined to stay in children's. Yeah. The Ira, Isaac and T-Man, which is Ira's best friend, mm -hmm. they start dying laughing because this kid is talking about somebody beating him bad. with skates. And <laughs> Ira, I said, Ira, how did you not laugh? Ira said he put his head down and plugged his ears. Yeah, I literally <laughs> plugged my ears. <laughs> he, I had to really focus. I had to lock in. Like, I'm not doing because I just all, did my month. He knew as soon, He just did his month. He, yep. he did his time. I did my time, man. <laughs> and he knew if ears. he would have let out a laugh, He'd have got man. me. I'd have been right back in right the service. Back. I, I used to be you know how it is when you're a kid yeah. too. I ain't trying to be in no adult. I ain't trying to be in no adult service. Like, it was your dad. Of course, it's my. But come on, I know my friends. They in the next room having fun, yeah. running around. That, that was yeah. Children's was fun. But yeah. Uh, uh, Paul and Michelin. They had yeah. That thing they had it up. Yeah. Guys, yeah. you already know how it was too. Playing, we was playing football. It's actually funny to think about. I was talking to my dude Dom about it because we're still cool to this day. We met at Litchfield Park Church. Um, at our old church back in the day. And in front of that church, there was a, a grass, field. grass field. There was like trees. And every morning, <laughs> Isaac knows, for a while, every morning, we were playing straight tackle football about yep. eight in the morning right yep. in front of the church. Yep. And it's actually funny as an adult because I'm thinking to myself, I can't imagine going to a church for our first time right when my family walk out. And the first thing I see is some little black kids just playing tackle <laughs> just play football tackle. at eight in the morning, Hitting fighting, throwing hands. Hitting each other. Like really beef. <laughs> Dirty grass stains in the yep. pants. Yeah. Sure. Even there. Wednesday nights. Wednesday, hey, Wednesday, Wednesday nights, nights yeah. we'd be cracking because the Man. sun would still be yep. setting. We'd still have some time. Yeah. I remember y'all would y'all be smelling musty before church even yeah. started. Yeah. Smelling like hard. Man. You know how it is too. You playing yeah. hard yeah. and yeah. talking. That's how. But it it's was. funny now, like in our roles and what we do at the church, and you know, from executive to media guys. Yep. Yeah. If I walk in the front of the church and I see eighteen black kids tackling Just, each other, <laughs> I, I'm shutting that down. No, they did. It got to a point where the children's pastors and they had like, "Hey, y'all can't play football no more for church." Because come on, like, come on. 
visitors. First time visitors. Yeah. I got kids doing the old, catching the Odell, catching yeah, the parking beef lot. Beef and arguing. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, I remember, I remember uh, you had a swing on Cleo. Yeah. Yeah. Some, some no, it was Robbie. Had, it was Robbie. It was Robbie. Yeah. Something had Ira in the chokehold. <laughs> Ira said, get off me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we was out there fighting. Jesus oh, Lord. Kid stuff. I remember that, bro. Oh, man. But now looking at 31, boy, looking back, I'm like, man. Because I used to be playing quarterback for both teams yeah. back then for y'all. Yeah. I was probably like 15, 16 years old. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, no. there's You get done with youth and come play with us. I come man. play with y'all, man. I remember that. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. Those, those, are, those are some good times. That's my man. favorite church all time, though. That yeah, Lichfield Lichfield Park Park Park. Park. And also, Park. too, the church I love was the um, Phoenix Church. Not the one we have now, but the one before. Uh, we had like a the whole. The one on Greenway. The one on Greenway. Oh, we had a whole like Greenway. fantasy factory in the youth room. Yeah. yeah. Youth, yeah. So we Our had, youth room was like a like a garage, but it was like over a thousand square feet. Yeah. It was a huge garage. We had, we had full court yeah. basketball. Literally, yeah, full yep. court basketball. Yeah. We were playing soccer, soccer on the wall. Dodgeball. Okay, my question is, when did you guys learn about Jesus? Uh, you know, we, we, know. we learned about the good Jesus a couple times. The good, the good Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> he said a couple times. Nah, we, we learned a lot. Man. It was it was a very, uh, it, was, it was a It was good nice balance. Time. It was a great it was, balance. It was good great balance. Just like how we all are now. You all know? right. We had a yeah. lot of fun, though, in church. And then, of course, you learn the word and you get it. But, like, most of the times that you really remember from the standpoint of just a memory uh, perspective is... Being with your friends, you know, meeting these yeah. people. Yeah. I mean, to this day, I still got friends that I grew up in church with Me that I'll still Same. check up on. Yeah. Same here, mm-hmm. yeah. That's good. So, like, it became like a, like a Walter. family. Like yeah. Walter, one, that's yeah. one of the main dudes I, I keep in communication with, man. He yeah. went to Deer Valley High School. We didn't even go to the same high school, but met at church. That's still my dog. Yeah, yeah. I'm, still, yeah. I'm still out with people. Like, I'll, it's actually funny. Like, I'll be out with my, my friend Dom or like my friend Donnie, all them people. They'll be like, people be asking me, like, how you guys meet? I'm like, you met at church. Like, yeah. We literally met at yeah. church when we were little kids. And yeah. now we're, we're all 23, 24 years Y'all old, still men. hanging out. You yeah. know, still What was out. it like growing up at home, though, with, uh, you know, uh, dad and I pastoring and, you know, I mean, I remember when we were younger, uh, we all kind of struggled with, uh, you guys don't spend time with us, because that was when you guys were, like, first starting uh, the church and everything. But, I mean, at the house, I mean, you guys just taught us nothing but good foundations. We had a good relationship to look up to, even. You guys rarely argued. We didn't know. You guys would send us to go to the park. You guys kept our lives pretty normal. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, you guys, uh, a main thing about learning the Bible, though, was dad always had us doing Bible trivia. Yeah. You remember that. He'd be like, y'all three sit down. We're going to do a trivia game. We just do Bible or sports trivia. So that that was part of it. You have to answer, whoever answered the quickest gets to go into the next round, and the other other one's got to kick rocks. But um, I remember when the church first started and how busy you guys were, you know, from the standpoint of, I mean, y'all would be gone from 8 a.m., get back to the crib, 7, 8 o'clock at night. Mm-hmm. And by that time, you know, I got I got all the kids fed and dressed and, you know, ready for bed and everything for the next day. But we understood from the standpoint of starting something like a church, it, it takes a lot of time, effort, um, especially you guys are pat when you guys were like like at the beginning, that first beginning stage of passion for, for ministry mm-hmm. is, is something that, you know, it's almost... It's not like you put us on the back burner, but we understood that it was important. Yeah, most definitely. Yeah. We understood, yeah. like, this is important. This is, we're changing lives. And then, of course, on top of the lives being changed, our lives started to change. We started, you know, doing different things and meeting new people and our life started to expand. And so it was kind of like. It was, a, it was, it was like, a, it was a, that's funny you say that. I was just going to bring up the lifestyle change because I still mm-hmm. remember being a little kid. Yeah. I remember being with y'all. I remember y'all were all in school or I remember I only went to school for like, it was like half day kindergarten Yeah, I was little. So y'all were at school and I would go to school at 12 to like 345. But I remember we first were moving to Surprise. I remember looking at the house. I remember there were stairs in the house. I'm like, yo, we have stairs, stairs. at our house. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I remember like running up and down the stairs, like what, come back, y'all were telling me, hey, I heard, how was the house? I'm like, man, we got stairs. Like, we got <laughs> stairs. I, it's funny, because now as an adult, I don't want stairs. No, man, I, don't, yeah. I, don't I, like stairs. I, I got stairs right now, I hate yeah, it. Yeah, stairs. like walk up your apartment, you yeah. know, I hit the stairs, I'm not trying to do that, but it's funny, Shoot. as a kid, you know, I saw our lifestyles change, and of course, um, yeah. you know, I still remember being a little kid, y'all sitting us down saying, hey, we're gonna start a church. And I remember another thing too, we were, I, me and Isaac were just talking about how y'all were telling us, like, hey, we, we can move to Tennessee. I remember, yeah. we did, we I remember we almost, we almost did. I remember, we almost moved to Tennessee. I remember that. Yeah. I remember we I remember were all crying, like, no, we don't want to leave. Yeah. And then, like, okay, we're going to move to Surprise. I'm like, Surprise? Like, what's that? Like, well, like, we I thought it was a surprise. I, I, I used to drive yeah. out down there to go swim at the Aquatic Center. The Aquatic Center. Center. Yeah. When yeah. we had the Blue Bomber and no yeah. AC. No AC. Yeah. Yeah. And you guys would get the towels wet and put it over your head yeah. so it would be cool on the drive home. Yeah. 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 But Surprise is random. Speaking of far. Speaking of cars, I remember another lifestyle thing is we were at the park real late at night and, um, 
we seen dad pull up in this uh, suburban. We can all finally fit in a car. <laughs> yeah. Right? It was always crazy. Yeah, always laughing. in vans. Yeah, always in vans or a, or a yeah. four door. So I remember when we finally got a suburban. It was like a 2001 suburban. Yeah. Yeah. We were so hyped, bro, at the park. Dad rolled down the window and honked and was like, what's up? Yeah, I ran, uh, ran up to the car. How many vans did we have? Um, At least four vans. I I, I think my my most vivid van story was when we you guys picked me up from work and we went to Jack in the Box to get dinner. And we order food for everybody and they hand us our food and our car declined. Yep. For the food, and yep. then our car just broke down. Yep, yep, yep. I was in the and back. And I literally, like, our car would not turn over, and the car declined. <laughs> and Dad's like in the drive, you know, like, uh, I'll eat some curly fries. Hey, I was about to it say, was too late. I was about, about to say, Ira, Ira and Isaac in the back seat tearing them curly <laughs> fries up. <laughs> I was just about to say that. Just for, them, just for us to give that bag back, back to, to the, the man. We didn't understand the, the concept of a car declining. <laughs> yeah, we didn't understand. Right. Yeah, I was just eating. We were just eating like in the pool's here. the bag from you boys. <laughs> and I literally just started crying in the front seat. And daddy's like, Kelly, it's not always going to be like this. And I just was like, like shaking, crying because... There was cars behind us. Our car wouldn't start. Yeah, it was terrible. I like me it, and Dad had to hop out the car and, and push, push it, it, push it so out the, the out the drive through to the little parking spot, so the other people could get their food. Yep. Damn. And then um, and then AAA took I worked for the home. police department. No, it wasn't AAA. I called the police department. Police, police. And they uh-huh. they did me a favor and towed our car home. We had to ride in the tow truck. And that's, that's what it was. It's a, we had to ride in a tow truck. And Yep. That was a sad day. You know, it's funny. I remember the tow truck ride because when we got in the tow truck with the guy, he he got some food from Jack in the Box. So he in there like yeah, eating the dirty. taco. Like, man, so rough night. Huh? <laughs> yeah, rough that night. eating a jumbo jack. <laughs> oh, like, he, I'm like, bro. Damn. I'm like, man, y'all broke his ass, man. I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he throwing curly fries at him. <laughs> man. Come on. I got in that truck, boy. He was eating the whole way. I'm thinking, <laughs> right here, bro. we about to go eat this two day old <laughs> pot of spaghetti at the crib. Maybe, maybe if it's if it's still there. Oh my goodness, I remember that. I remember vividly. that. I remember and that I love whole night. that because even then we were we were still faithful in church. We were still, oh, yeah. you know, always giving our tithe and offering, always yeah. talking about the blessings of God. But we were struggling, like yeah. as a family. That's why when Dad and I preach to people, we understand. What that feels like, and sure. I and I don't, I don't want us mm-hmm. to ever forget that either, because mm-hmm. you know I'm thankful things have changed. But I remember, remember we were all going to school that day, and Dad's the hubcap, the hubcap story. Hubcap. <laughs> that, was it that we got a flat tire? So no, no. What happened was he was excited because he got his check, and um, he we had a, new rims. We had a van, but it had four donuts, right? Yep. And so he's like, I'm putting some rims on it. So. Yes. Went to Walmart. They, you know, they got the little pack for four for the like for rims. like fifty four ninety nine. Put them on. Yeah. And he popped them on there, <laughs> yeah. and they were nice and shiny. Yeah, nice nice little shiny. Rims. Yeah. Things look like they look real. They was they was tens, but we keep them clean. clean. Keep them clean, <laughs> man. We get the we we going to uh I think we were going to, to school. School. I was taking on death. And um something happened to where the hubcap fell off. And I remember seeing it rolling in the street. And I'm like, oh. Over to get it. And he goes, oh, man, my hubcap. And he pulls into the parking lot. And uh, we all get out the car. Because now everybody's looking for the hubcap. Right. And it's on Bell Road. And it's busy. Yes. And uh, I will. I remember vividly, <laughs> Stella goes, oh, dad, it's right there. And we all look. And at the same time looking, here come a semi truck. Crank, crank. Yep. Roll right um, over it, bro. Cracked it. Cracked it in half. <laughs> I remember that. That's funny. It That's something out of a movie. It broke, and I remember the de- like everyone just felt so defeated yes. in that moment. Let me have three yeah. rims on that joint. Everyone, we looking, everyone just it, no one said anything. If yeah. you if you remember, it was, I just remember. I remember. I remember that being like. <laughs> God. I don't know how y'all I did it. Bought, uh, I just bought though. Now we're so young too. I just got though. It's what crazy. Again, it's just. And we still oh were like, I think dad actually ended up, we ended up going to breakfast. We didn't go to school. He yeah, said, he's like, you know no what? one's going to school. We're going to yeah. go get breakfast. We got breakfast. We, breakfast because we were that devastated yeah. so by we that. Got, but we got back in our van with our three our three, three, rib, ca- our three, three hubcaps. Yes. Yeah. And, and we couldn't IHOP. afford a new pack. He's good, I have. No, you can't go we back and get a new pack. pack. Mm-hmm. It just, we had to take all three off. It was a wrap. I remember that semi truck rolling over. I still I still hear the sound. Yeah, it was a click, 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 click. 
I said, oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> that really just happened. Now, what's funny oh. is like, was he going to go terrible. out there and get it? He was going to go grab it. Oh my God. Oh, Which God spared his own He's about to man. risk He's his, his life for the hubcap. For for <laughs> he just bought a hubcap. Imagine to see Dad get hit by a car to go get a dang hubcap. <laughs> yes. That's a way to go. But okay, do y'all remember <laughs> one more? Video? It's like real life Frogger. Remember yeah, Frogger? Yeah, yeah Frogger. <laughs> one Instead more, of Frogger, it's Pastor. Right. <laughs> one more van movie. Do y'all remember when we went and got that pizza? Oh, and, I remember and this that. Is a, man. Y'all, this is a that. true story. We got a whole. Listen now back this. then, we're like, we're gonna get pizza, we and it was broke. a large pizza, and yep. it was like a stretch. It was nine ninety nine for this pizza. Yes. And we all got back in our van, and we put the pizza on the roof. On the roof. So we're driving. And we turn to go in the corner to, yep. to our house, and Dad goes, "Hey, where's the, where's pizza? the pizza?" And nobody had the pizza, y'all. It was on our roof. It made it the whole way home. Made it the whole drive. This is a true story. An up. angel from God yep. held down that pizza on the roof of our car because that was dinner. That was it. Yes. So that that was a miracle sign and wonder. Hey, right there. hey, real Man. quick, real quick. Speaking of pizza, I know I'm not trying to <laughs> throw my sister Mariah under the bus, but I remember being a little kid one time. I remember my grandpa, our grandpa Jerry, our step grandpa. Shout yeah. out to Jerry. He gave us, uh, he gave Mariah a hundred dollars just looking out for her. She asked him like, "I got a hundred dollars." Yeah. And like, I remember he like blessed her with a hundred dollars, just being nice. Mm-hmm. And she made the wrong decision and told my parents <laughs> that she got a hundred dollars. I'm telling this right now. I remember y'all went to the fries <laughs> up the street and went to Lucky's Pizza. And I remember we was all eating that pizza. I remember Mariah was just crying the she whole time. Crying. <laughs> she was hot. That was my money. <laughs> She was crying the whole time. We was tearing that pizza up. We was all weak. I remember all of us was laughing at it. Dad, and Dad kept the change, bro. Yeah, he kept it. Dad kept the hey, change. Hey, I, I, I remember vividly us being in the car. And we just leaving Grandma's house. Yeah. And uh, we just talking, you know, whatever. And she's like, oh, yeah, Jerry, give me $100. Boy. I remember at the, at, at the same time, everyone in the car looked at her. Boy, that's Boy, we went. We pulled her right to Lucky's. Hey, I, remember, I, remember going, I remember going to Lucky's. I remember we was all eating pizza. I just remember her crying. I was, that's funny. Yeah, bro. She that's was hot. Right? That's Mariah. crazy. This stuff's like almost like 20, probably about 20 years. Years ago, almost years. all this stuff's like 15, 20 years That's old. crazy. It was gas and groceries. Yeah. It doesn't even seem like Shoot, real. Y'all remember, I remember back in the day having birthdays, people give you money. Boy, I would lie. I wouldn't tell them. That was, that was Kelly and Reggie's money. Yes. Yeah. Well, no, it was the family's money. Remember one time you bought groceries for breakfast. You know what? You know what? You know what? I'm sorry. There's so box. many stories. I remember I turned like eight and I had a big party, had all kinds of people over, and I got like $126. You know, as an eight year old boy, that's that's big money. You know what I mean? Hundred twenty six dollars. I remember you and Dad was like, "Man, did you have a good birthday?" And I'm like, "Yeah, I had a good birthday." <laughs> They're like, "How much you get?" I was like, "Man, I got a hundred pocket gotta, watch." I'm, 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 hey, hey, I'm uh, excited. I'm excited though. I'm <laughs> counting twenty, forty, sixty. I'm, 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 I'm I got a hundred twenty six dollars. Mom did it so smooth. She said, "Cool, let's go to the store. Let's go to we're gonna, we're gonna go to fries or Safeway. Safeway back then. Mm-hmm. We're gonna go to fries, and you can pick out whatever you want." And I was like, "Cool." So I, we go to Safeway. Mom goes regular grocery shopping. But every like Bleach so often, she's like, hey, do you want that candy bar? I'm like, yeah. She throw it in the car. That's real slick. And then she'll go get like cereal, milk, yeah. <laughs> detergent. Uh, uh, Lysol. Lysol. <laughs> and then be like, oh, do you like that? Do you like that game? Oh, oh yeah, grab that. And throw it in the cart. And then she go back. Uh, Windex, Bleach. Clorox, right. Lysol. Meat. And meats. <laughs> and ground, yes. ground beef. Baloney. And boy, yeah. by the time we got to that register, uh, they beeped everything. All right, it's going to be $115.95. Right. She looked right at me like, hey, let me get that uh, that money. Well, we'll, we'll pay you back. Get you back. Jesus. I gave her I gave her that money. That was groceries. Hey, man, Zay was doing I got a bu- I got a butterfinger out of it, though. Yeah. You know, the thing, the, the blessing is, again, I, I love <laughs> that we have those stories because yeah. God is faithful and he is always been a provider and still is. Mm-hmm. I, I we, we we talk about this stuff often because yeah, yeah. again I don't think you should forget I think you talk about how God sure. helped you get through tough times and that was that's real it's sad that you have to take your child's birthday money but I'm sure there's plenty hey, of people out there that get it yeah. listen I I'm 31 I get it like oh, it, sometimes yeah, if you man. if you need it you gotta get it you right. know and yeah. it's crazy I was telling I was telling uh, who was I talking to my boy Terrell about how like our move our life is like literally like a movie it is like it doesn't make any Low sense key. all these stories and I mean, there's still so many. We could be here for three hours Easy. talking about yeah. stuff. But, you know, you look at how we grew up and where we came from to where we are now. It's just like literally like the 
an American dream, if you will. Yeah. It's, night, yeah. it's night and day, bro. Yeah. You know, and yeah. that, it really is just a testament of God's goodness. Yeah, you know? well, and of course, yeah. y'all work ethic too. Y'all, y'all work out there because yeah. I didn't they get it hard. as a little kid. I remember y'all would miss because I remember y'all would go to a, um, a pastors conference every March, the beginning of March in yep. like Seattle. Mm-hmm. And I remember y'all would y'all miss probably like six of my birthdays. Yes. When I was a little yep. kid, yep. Yep. and like birthday. it's funny because as a kid, I didn't get it at all. I'm like, well, man, ain't gone for my birthday. I'll be like, hey, we're gonna celebrate you on the fifth. Not right. the eighth. Mm-hmm. Right. I said like, I didn't like that. I'm like, man, come on, y'all hang out. But y'all were going out of state to to ultimately help us to yeah. provide for us to yeah. you know um, they were get, learning how to do ministry saying, get your get you guys skills yeah. sharper get and still dad's skills. even atlanta right now exactly. learning He's how learning to how do how ministry still still. Still. y'all are still y'all are learners and that's what it is so as a kid i didn't get it but i remember when i turned like i probably turned like 12 years old that's when i first sat back and was like you know what like i i get it like mm-hmm. i live a great life you know when the sports times come around Dad, I need a new cleats or I need a glove, something yeah. like that. I need a basketball Shoot, that shoes. that was canceling services. Exactly. Like, remember freshman year, he yep. wouldn't preach on Wednesdays to be at our games. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Same so, with Zaya. So all of yeah. us, all of us, all of our freshman games, he made sure he missed church every yep. every week to come to our games. Yep. So yeah. as a kid, you know, you don't get it. But it, it hit me pretty quick. I was about 12, 13. I was like, you know what? Like, I live a great life. Yeah. For me, it was about the same age. That's saying, weird. Yeah, I'm yeah. saying about, I'm about like, you know, I live age. a great life. My parents are mm-hmm. gone. They're doing the best for us. And ultimately, yeah. it was because of sports. Yeah. Because yeah. we already knew, as you already know how it was. We go to Universal Athletic, yeah. places like that. With dad, he get his gloves, Take visor, us to wristbands, yeah. go to Dick Sporting Goods, get us whatever we wanted. Yeah. So, you know, as a little kid, it hit me quick. You know what? I shouldn't complain this much because right. I got my right. friends out here looking bummy Shoot, asking, asking me for a glove. Yeah. Can I wear a glove? Can I wear a glove? <laughs> <laughs> Remember, he, dad even had uh, Greg taking us to places like when y'all would go to, uh, yeah. when y'all would leave state, shout go out to, to town. Greg. Man, shout out Greg, yeah. man. He, yeah. he would always look G out Mitch. for us, man. Yeah. G Mitch, bro. But yeah. he would always take us to baseball tournaments, football practice, take us yep. to the church. He was always looking out when y'all were so busy. So, you know, you guys always made sure you had resources laid out for us exactly. and you always made sure you were there yeah. and we, we were loved that. too and we always we felt loved, loved. i yeah. never we, i can honestly say i yeah. never didn't feel loved from my parents yeah. i'm the i'm the I hugger mean of the family you are yeah i always hug the, the babies yeah. you are well, you, guys, yeah. you guys are still my babies even well, though you're yeah growing now but you know yeah. what it is you're, now, yeah it's different i'm sorry to cut you off i was gonna say about like love languages like you you're the hugger i am you're comforting mm-hmm. you're talking you know but dad I ask you how you yeah, feel. Exactly. But dad's love language was always, like I said, getting us stuff. That's yeah. the provider. Hey, y'all good? Y'all yeah. need something? Y'all yeah. hungry? Like, yeah. that was that was, that was was the provider. That we was got his love that language. Quick. So I know, you know, when I know when dad's getting us stuff like that when we were kids or just um, sports trivia or, hey, y'all want to go, go get some food here? Let's yeah. go do that. That was his love language. Well, so the first day I met. It was best of both worlds. The yeah. first day I met daddy, we're talking about, of course, our children we wanted to have and we wanted six kids, and which was amazing. And then he was, he, I would say, I'm going to buy you a big house. And I would be like, that. who cares? You know, it, that was never my thing. So my point is that's always been dad's love language is that he feels like he, he likes to provide. Gotcha. And I'm yeah, thinking gotcha. that he does that for us. Yeah. Yep. But, no, seriously. Um, yeah, it's just, I just love, you know, how I do the how I do our grandkids now. You guys don't know, know this, but when you guys were little, I couldn't do much for you. Mm-hmm. And I would always tell daddy, there's I want there to be a day where I can get things for my grandkids. So I, I was so removed from being having you know any type of financial blessing that mm-hmm. I thought I could do it for my grandkids. Yeah. I didn't think I could do it for you guys. Gotcha. And um because I had hope for our future and um just knew that God was a provider. Mm-hmm. And I would always say my dream is to have toys and things for my grandkids when they come over, they can have their own bedroom and their own th- like stuff that was so far fetched. Sure. And that's why when people see what I post on Instagram or see things now, they might think it's ex- extensive or extreme, but that that to me is God's blessing his word coming true in my life Good, yeah. and yeah. I'm able to do that for my grandkids. And mm-hmm. it's just a, such a strange, it's, it's a strange place to be because I spoke it 30 years ago yeah, and yeah. now here it is. It took 30 years right. for yeah. it to manifest. So if you're out there, keep on believing God's going to do great things for you because yeah. God knows he hears your heart. He knows your prayer and he really does give the desire of your heart. That was a desire of my heart. And um, as small as that might be for someone else, it, it matters to me. And now I'm in a place where my kids have all moved out, and it's really strange that, you know, my children, my adult children have moved out of the house, yeah. and that's just a weird place to be. Cause but uh, you have the grandkids now. We see, mom, yeah. we all see how you are with the babies. Oh, they, they, oh, they love, man. And they love you more than you love them. Yeah. I know, but they're not, not here with me. <laughs> that, I mean, those, those twins are with me for five years, man. and yeah. now they're not here. In fact, I cried last Tuesday. I was sitting outside by myself, and I started crying mm-hmm. because I had to – realize that these these little babies that were been with me for five years are now gone. Yeah. Of course, Layla and Jada, you've, you know, sure. did the traditional family way, but sure. they were my little friends. And yeah. now they're gone and then the house is quiet and the house is clean and 
I, Yo, I, 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 I miss I miss the chaos. I miss the crafts. I miss stuff being out. I miss the smell of breakfast and people talking to me. I, I miss all that mm-hmm. hustle and bustle, if you will. And uh, I don't miss y'all. I miss the grandkids. No, I, I'm yeah, no, I do no, not I miss the adults. Yeah, and course, it's yeah. only going to be more grandkids for you too. You yeah, know, right. of course, of course, right. only two, not even half your kids. More have grandkids? Kids. Are you? You have something to tell me? No, but I'm saying <laughs> at least you know only two of your five kids have kids. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. I know, but it's just it's way just. More. But it's, I understand where you're coming from. Yeah, from I get the standpoint it. of you've you've been around with them every single day. And, and I love ch- I love children. I love raising kids. That's why I had five sure. of y'all. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. one and six, but I, I, I had five of y'all and I, I wish I had three more sons, actually. I wish I would have three more kids. Man, can you believe so, that? I can believe it, but I can. I'm glad that I'm glad that but, I'm glad that y'all called yeah, quits. Yeah, I'm glad y'all did. Remember when yeah. I thought I was pregnant? I dad remember that. Dad yeah. was mad at me. Yeah. Man. Man. Like, he was like 42. He was like 42 years yeah. old. Like, I remember that. Dad was mad. He's like, you better not be pregnant. He's 42. That like, baby was going to come out with a third leg. Imagine right <laughs> Imagine right now we had a 13, 14-year-old sibling. Yeah, that's not crazy. Oh, that's that so weird. Annoying. I'm that's sorry. Strange. That would she be would annoying. Be so that would out. honestly be annoying. Yeah, super left out. Left out, I feel bad. But yeah, yeah, mom. The baby would be 13. The baby would be like 20. Well, let me see. 22. Because well, you're 24. Well, no, this is early. No. I was like 12 or 11. I was like 12. I guess so. Yeah, yeah he would be like, yeah. like yeah. somewhere around. He'd be like 14. He'd be he like was, dad was freshman legitimately year. mad yeah. that I might be pregnant. I remember that. Jeez. Remember, y'all called me. I drove to the house to wait for you to take the test. I did. That's I took crazy. the test in front of all the kids. Oh, I remember, that's crap. I, I drove that. to the crib. And remember, I came back negative and dad laid on the floor prostrate. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I remember that. I remember that. Golly. I threw a wrench in all of our plans. I was all excited. Life would have been so different. Super weird. It would have been different. So. Yes. Yeah. But yes, mom, we see with the grandkids. It's like honestly, it's like it's like sorcery. Like I mean, like seeing like how they gravitate towards you, so yeah. crazy. Like mm-hmm. how they ask for the GG and like, well, I talked to them. Like, about, man, like she's like a, it's like like wizardry. I talked mm-hmm. to I talked to them about life. I talked to them about Jesus. I talked to them about who they are. I want them to know, like just like with you guys. Yeah. You know, I was always been that person. Mm-hmm. You know, I've tried to be that parent yeah. that genuinely talks about life and Jesus and how you feel and let's talk about it and all that and so I'm thankful that you guys have that balance yeah listen yeah. they were mad matter of fact this morning I was leaving the house I went to the gym this morning came home got dressed and I told them I got to go to Gigi's to yeah. shoot the podcast and these girls started putting on their shoes because right. yeah. oh, they thought they man. were coming with me <laughs> yeah. and I had to be like no I gotta go I gotta go work wow. and she they Jada lost it. She run into the room. Layla runs upstairs. And that's her new thing. She goes to her room now. Okay. So she's four. Oh, so she, she goes up to her room and like shuts the door. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. And the two year old is just running around. She got her arms yeah, folded. I know. Yeah, I know. Jada, 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 around, man. Jada be swinging. But it's funny. She got her shoes on the wrong feet. Like she ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, like, I'm, I'm like, you ain't going on this one, man. Maybe next time. Uh, maybe later. They're but hot. that's just the legacy. You know, yeah. it's yeah. just. I'm just, as a mom, I'm just so thankful that you guys, you guys are all working in ministry yeah. and the girls know about church life and mm-hmm. Savannah swears she's going to be a preacher and Layla sings her worship songs and yeah. they understand church life just like you all do. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. that's the legacy that, that to me is the true blessing, the big promise yeah, it is. that I've yes. always prayed for and, hey, and speaking, wanted. Speaking of the babies with um, um, Jesus and everything, I remember we were at the crib the other day. And um, Jada, we were talking about David and Goliath. Remember that? Yeah. And we were like, uh, what happened? Dad was like, hey, uh, Layla, what happened with, with David and Goliath? Jada was like, she started swinging. She started like, swinging. She started pushing. <laughs> I was like, man, I know the story went that way. I was like, like man, David gave Goliath the hand? He beat, he beat him to death. three smooth stones. <laughs> That's a new story. Five. Or five smooth stones. <laughs> he beat him. He, he got <laughs> beat to death by David. Yeah, I, was, I thought David, like Goliath was You know, that's what we said. we said. We said, David killed Goliath. She said, yeah. We said, how? Yeah. And she started punching. <laughs> she started yeah. swinging. I'm like, I don't know if it went that way. But got, got, got the idea. Yes. Oh, it was she, a fight. It yeah. was a She's fight. two. She'll be three in September. <laughs> yes. Oh, my gosh. September man. 3rd. Well, listen, I know it's been a great time us talking about just our culture and our life. I want to do a really quick recap, though, about uh, this past Sunday. As you all know, it was Easter Sunday. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, that is celebrating the resurrection The resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And um, it was one of our biggest Sundays that we've had since, I mean, post-pandemic. Yep. Um, over over 1,600 people, adults, if you will, at both services. And I mean, God is good. It was a great time. But I just really quick want to go through um, what Pastor was talking about. Um, he, he, We've been preaching a series called Keep Pushing. Yeah. And 
understanding that we go through trials and error and things in life, but no matter what it is, whatever wall you hit, it's all about keeping that mentality that you got to keep pushing. You got to keep going forward. And he went from a different perspective of it where why Jesus had to keep pushing um, for us when it came to the standpoint of him meeting his demise in his earthly body and, and being crucified. Um, he came from the scripture where we find Jesus in the garden of Gethsemane, which is, which is, uh, uh, which means the oil press. And there's a point where Jesus is so flustered and, and, and really just going through, yeah, just going through the, 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 the rigmarole of understanding that he's about to die. And I mean, I don't know about you, any human being, um, I, I've never wanted to personally, I've never wanted to die, but I can't imagine knowing that it's about to happen. Mm -hmm. And, and Jesus is at this point where he knows it's about to happen. And so, um, pastor talked about three ways or three reasons why he had to keep pushing through it. Um, number one, it was to give us access to God's presence, understanding that as soon as Jesus passed, he went up, to, uh, was in the tomb three days, rose, uh, took the keys from hell, from, from Satan and went up to with our heavenly father. And that's how we were able to have access to his presence and gifted the gift of the Holy spirit. Um, and then number two was having access to his grace. We know grace and mercy. If we, if it wasn't for that boy, all of us would be in trouble because mm -hmm. there's not one perfect person I've met in my life, including yours truly. So, uh, we get access to his grace, which is new every morning and then access to his keys, which is, uh, just a sign of authority. You have a authority over different things in your life. You have authority over hell. You have authority over your life and, and believing that you're going to have an expected end, like in Jeremiah 29 and 11, where yeah. it says that, uh, for I know the plans that I have for you, plans to give you a future and a hope. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, it was a really good Sunday. I believe that that's the mentality that we're going to be carrying for the rest of this year. Um, obviously, we've proclaimed it as the year of expansion. Yep. I've already seen God expand us in so many different ways in our personal lives. And we've heard about so many different stories of individuals that go to the church, that expansions has happened left and right, you know, but I also believe that this is the season of, Hey, listen, we're getting to that point of the year. We're starting to get hot here in Arizona and we got to keep pushing. We're going to keep it moving for Jesus and, and keep on going through anything that you're going through is it, it won't take you out. I, I believe that wholeheartedly. You know, and let me just say this too. I'm, I'm here with dad while he's getting the messages prepared. Mm -hmm. So what usually happens is he'll give me an idea, a thought, and then um, I was, we were sitting on the couch, and Dad goes, he just says, hey, you know what? Jesus had second thoughts. He did. And he was like, Jesus had second thought, man. He's like, here it is, Jesus, our Lord and Savior, mm -hmm. had second thoughts about dying for us. Yep. He's like, like me, when I was on my way to our wedding, I had second thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Like, like, you know, and he started talking to me about having second thoughts. And I love that. That's how Dad gets inspired by the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. just by sitting and talking. And then he gets on this whole tangent about second thoughts, how amazing it is that our God through his humanity actually had second thoughts about going to the cross. Yeah, and that's how dad came up with that whole concept. He's like, but Jesus had to keep on pushing. Yeah. And then dad stands up. He starts preaching to me. I wish you all could see how that's happens. Cool. <laughs> he starts preaching to me. Cool. Then he goes, gets his little pad. Cause daddy writes all his notes down he with does. a pen and paper. Yeah. Marcus gets the notes. It's a a yep. It's like, maybe four lines of notes and become a whole message. A whole message, yeah. Whereas I write 10 to 12 pages typed right. of my message. But um, that's how dad does it. And yeah. he, he was like, man, he had second thoughts. He's like, I'm about to preach that. Mm -hmm. um, keep pushing because Jesus had to keep pushing for us, us even though he had second thoughts. Yeah. So I thought that was, I just wish y'all could see how it, what it's like to be married to someone who is a cool guy. He's really, he is a cool guy, by the way. He's like still a little street little bit <laughs> and he's like and he he loves his family loves me and um loves jesus and mm -hmm. really truly comes up with messages from the holy spirit to preach to god's people still almost 20 years later has a passion to hear what god has to say and loves his family we just got back in town was it last weekend and, yep. and dad's like no i want to go have dinner with everybody i want to be with my kids yeah. Now, he won't tell y'all that, but he tells me that. Sure, sure, sure. And so, but we know it. We I know. know. Yeah, we, we know. We know it. We and, know. Yeah. and he's like, I want the kids around. I want everybody to come over. And I love that. I know y'all are men. Yeah, sure. But you'll always be our kids. And, and I, I just... I just, I guess I'm missing him because he's been gone since Monday. Mm -hmm. okay, although he'll be back tomorrow. But then I leave tomorrow. But um, I'm thankful to be married to a guy like your dad. Yeah, and that's I'm, awesome. I'm thankful that, you know, he raised y'all boys 
so well. And the girls, too. I wanted the girls to be on today, but because I really think you guys need women's perspective. Yeah, but anyway. We'll do that. Um, we'll, get them, I, we'll get them on here eventually. But I love, I birthed all y'all, and you guys are amazing. And yeah. We love you, too, Mom. Yeah, Mom. I know yeah. you love We have Ira. amazing parents. We, we do. have amazing parents. And Seriously. I know people think Seriously. it's weird because we're so close or whatever that weirdness is. I guess people would rather see us fighting and yelling and hating each other. But we aren't really this close. Yeah, but that's the that's yeah. the culture. That's what you see nowadays. Yep. You see, that's how the average American home is, regardless of race. We've be been approached thing. three times to do a reality show, and every producer says we don't have enough drama. Now they've missed a lot. <laughs> they've missed a lot. Man. But yeah. and that that was always the answer. There's not enough drama when we all live together. Yeah. Now, now I wouldn't watch all to see what you know, you don't you don't need to know what goes on behind it's closed doors. It's the kitchen. And yeah. that's where we, yeah, 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 amen. But anyway. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but no, no, about uh, back to uh, the message Sunday, though. You know, this yes. is the time of the year uh, to slow down. You know, everybody, they always say it's March or April when people's New Year's resolutions fade out. Oh, yeah. People start to dwindle. Their church attendance dwindles or yeah. their goals. If their you diet. Will. Yeah, their diet, whatever you want to call yeah. it. So I just want to just say keep pushing because this is that time where this happens. You know, don't forget. And if you do, go back and look at those notes you wrote down in your notepad or in your goals somewhere. Go check it out to give yourself some more self-motivation. Mm -hmm. Because, again, it's better to be self-driven rather than TikTok-driven or social media-driven. Oh, that's oh, yeah. real good. got to be self-driven. So yeah. go look at those notes, if you will, and keep pushing, y'all. That's yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah. You're right about that. It is definitely a time of the year where um, people can just fall off, regular mm -hmm. habits, daily habits. Um, you know, because you know, it's, it's already a quarter through the year, which is insane. Crazy. I feel like the year just started. But... Um, you know, you can easily get distracted. You can fall off easy. But it's just nice to actually regroup, you know, come yeah. back together, you know, go back to the drawing board and say, okay, how did this quarter go? Let me figure out my next quarter, the next quarter, the next quarter. Year's up, and it's going to be Easter again. Y'all know how it is. Yeah, bro. It's, time flies. it's crazy. Like, yeah. days feel like days feel like months. Uh, months feel like days. Yeah. Years feel like minutes now, yeah, which is insane. It seems like when I graduated yeah. college, like, time just. Yeah, everything yeah. just went by just, quick. You're getting yeah. older. Man. Even, like, summer breaks. Remember, remember when you were a kid, when school went in? It took, you felt like it took forever school to come back. Oh, you're like, yeah. man, what's summer school? break. You're like, man, summer break's annoying. You get to a point where you're like, man, like, you, you get to a point where you're so bored summer break, you're, like, actually, like, doing school. Like, yeah. Yeah, doing math doing work. Like you, yeah. You're doing like long division in the summertime. Yeah. You're kind of like, man, when's school coming back? You know, we're waiting for it. But now, yeah. summertime's fly by. Quick. We're going to look up. It's going to be Easter 2024. Yeah. 2025. And that's mm -hmm. what it is. So, yep. you know, to everybody who's, you know, a little discouraged or you feeling like, you know, the year's not going your way, all you got to do is just go back to the drawing board and um, regroup and just go from there. You know, all you got to do is, you know, deal with the deal with the cards you are dealt and um, make the best out of it. So, um, yep, like Pastor's has been saying, keep pushing. And um, we still here with you. We yeah. gonna, we gonna still be in your ears doing this podcast, trying to yeah. help everybody out. So. Yeah, still a young, a long year. We still yeah. in the spring equinox, really. Exactly. Even yeah, summer, yeah. summer solstice. It's, yeah, it's, it's already hot. But yeah, you know, that's yeah. oh my goodness, it's right. sun beating yeah, right dude. now. Yeah. I got I can't rock no jumpsuits. I can't rock none of this in a second. It's so over. I'm it's gonna over. enjoy it while I can. Yeah, yeah. what we say the other day: suns out, guns out, man. Yeah. Yeah. Suns out, guns like out, it's, buns it's, out. Buns. Yeah, sundress season. Mommy on sundress. Yeah, sundress season. That's my favorite season. Well, listen, I'm so glad that you're able to come on with us again Thank today. you for having me. You're great. Yes. You're like our you're our substitute guest as yes. of right now. Yes. So I'm so glad I that you're able. I appreciate it, y'all. Easy, easy to talk to, Mom. We love your, we yeah. love your perspective. I yeah. love talking Such to you guys. Such a smart woman. We, yes. get it, we get it all from you. So thank yes. you. You yeah. do. You're great, Mom. Yeah. Love you, Mom. Hey, y'all. But listen, make sure you click subscribe. Hit the notification button so we can make sure every single time we come on, you guys get... Uh, live access to what we do here every single Friday. We're so glad that you're able to tune in. We're looking forward to it. That's a wrap for episode 11. We will see you guys next week. Make sure you have one of the best weeks of your life. Peace.